Good evening, YouTube, Heir of Carthage here, and welcome back to the Archaeon campaign, where we're going to be continuing to lead the Ever Chosen. I have him right here outside of Vulture Mountain, and you'll notice that there's a message here that the short campaign objectives are complete. Well, this is a few turns later than the last recording that I made. Um, the Bretonians just got wiped out by the Dark Elves, so that is indeed why it's saying short campaign complete. But you know what, folks? We're not here for a short campaign, are we? We're here to conquer the dwarves. We showed our dominance over Kimri. I now have Archaeon in, in position to kick off the war against the dwarves. I didn't want to leave this settlement down here. And then he will move north through the southern badlands. And uh, then from the north um, within the Peak Pass area here and moving south towards the Rib Peaks, I've got Felman Ingerson and Colex Suneater in position. And then right now in Sylvania, moving in towards Zufbar, I have uh, Prince Sigvald and Patchy the Eversalt. And uh, we are ready to move in full force on the Dwarf Empire, which is the last main empire that's holed out against us. So hope you all are ready for some fun. Let's get things started. Now, I normally start off an episode with comments. I really only think we have two episodes left. Please feel free to go in there and leave your comments still. I'm not going to start this episode off with comments, not because I don't want to, but because we're near the end and I want to focus all the time on wrecking the dwarves. I will be doing just some highlights if there is downtime in between dwarf wrecking. So, yes, that's kind of how this is going to work. All right, now I'm going to let Archaeon kick things off with the destruction of Vulture Mountain, which has a pretty sizable garrison, actually, so this should be an entertaining battle. Um, we're going to declare war, and we will, of course, call in all of our allies uh, against the Dawi, and we'll see. They are out... What? CA, please. The dwarves are allied with clan moors. Are you kidding me? What a joke. Clan Morris joins them. Besornling refuses to join me? Oh, no you didn't. No you didn't. I don't even think so, Besornling. I didn't revive you just to let you get away with that bullcrap. Um, so we could set up siege equipment, and honestly we probably should, um, because they have so many thunders. A couple of towers should get the job done. And we'll be ready to siege here after a few turns. So let's continue the siege at Vul uh, Vulture Mountain. I can't believe the Sornling is stupid enough to break away from us. Yeah, they're at war with us now because of that. Have fun with that. I mean, Throg is right on top of you. Let me, um... Or no, they may have been at war because I clicked the dwarves there. Let's see what their diplomatic faction is. I wish that wasn't even allowed with chaos. Like I, I understand it with some, but it's like tree hordes are no match for the bloodthirsty warriors of the tribes. Uh, yeah, my hordes are more than a match for you. Trust me. Um, <laughs> yeah, there's nothing here. So they are at war with vessels of chaos. They're at war with the Dune Kingdoms, my faction. They're at war with Norska von Karstein. Yeah, they're not gonna last long. I kind of feel like Norska is going to give them a pretty quick beat down. Um, so yeah, have, have fun with that. Enjoy. Anyway, I'm going to uh, get other attacks against the dwarves started uh, near Zifbar. We are 19 out of 20 in this army because I believe that the Sornling is still injured. Salt the garrison up here. <laughs> Look at the uh, von Karstein armies hiding up here and freezing in the mountain passes because they're so terrified of what I have. Yeah, I think the Sornling is still wounded. He is, so that is why Sigvald's army is down one character. Um, it looks like we can take the siege straight to Zifbar, which uh, doesn't have much of a garrison. Let's continue the siege here and then uh, move up another stack to help reinforce. I'll probably auto-resolve Zifbar. I want to focus on battles that are going to be quite epic, like the one where Archaeon's got a pretty significant dwarf garrison there, uh, whereas this one is relatively insignificant, and I'm not particularly concerned about it. So let's just get Oakenhammer out of the way. And the first dwarf settlement is raised. We've got the Amber Trace. Some of my characters are getting so many skill points that I can't even spend them anymore because I'm using the 60 skill point mod. 
60 skill points is kind of cool for like your legendary lords, but it's too many for the heroes. So I don't know if there's a mod that maybe gives them more specific setups. It's possible. I don't know. I think it's uh, Nappa here who leveled up. Let's see if I can actually select him. There we go. He's finished specialist. Uh, we can make him immortal now, which we probably should. We're likely to get a swarm of dwarf agents all over us. And as for Kolak and uh, Felman, who are up here, we finally have Coco Pox back in Felman's army. Felman's army is capable of handling a decent stack of dwarves on his own. And uh, Kolak uh, can at least come over here and um, put Mount Gunbad under siege so we can hold the dwarves on this front. So I'm going to push this way with Kolak. Or actually, we'll push through the mountains over here with our other forces. Let's push Kolak and Felman together so that their combined strength will stop anything in their path. So that's going to be my goal there. We'll do, uh, we can continue to replenish Coco Pox and get him ready to take things on. We're going to have Appius here who has skill points that I can't spend. Um, and so I'm just, I mean, I can, but I don't need those horses and stuff. So we're just going to have to skip that one every time. Holy crap, look at this. Norska Confederated Basornling. Perfect. Because Norska is still my vassal. <laughs> So I guess they must have beaten their lord in a battle, and then they confederated. <laughs> oh, that's brilliant. I'm going to actually sick my allies here. Let's go into uh, diplomacy, and I'm going to pick Norska, yes. and uh, I'm going to set a war coordination target for Norska, and I think we're going to go after Von Karstein with them. And then as for the uh, Dark Elves, I'm not really intending to give them any targets, to be honest. I don't think I can give any targets to the Vessels of Chaos, because I'm not even sure if they show up. Yeah, I don't even think they show up in here. Um, so, not worried about that. I don't care what the Dark Elves do, I don't need their help here. I mean, if they want to come start wrecking people, fine by me. Let's skip past that one. Elvis the Blind Swordsman has leveled up, and we're going to give him immortality as well. I don't want to lose these characters once we have them. Uh, our objective, remember, was to burn the Oak of Ages as well, but the, the, the Oak is very well protected, and there are a significant number of dragons. I don't think I got to show you all this yet. There's two Treemen, and what is this, uh, seven dragons on top of uh, Durthu being there, and then in the garrison, oh boy, yeah, we got two more Treemen, four kin. So this is way more than Vardek Krom can handle in and of himself. Way more. Um, there's actually not a lot of skirmishers here, which is kind of the shocking piece of this. There's a few uh, wild riders, but uh, only a couple of glade guards. So I don't know. Honestly, if we had enough halberds in this army, we do have the soul of damnation. Um, we might be able to bring them down. Um, it would be it would be a very tough fight. But uh, we would need a significant amount more halberds at this point in order to do it. Um, so I'm thinking uh, if we trade out these chosen for chosen with halberds, that might be the ticket. A um, little bit of a risk to do that uh, right here in front of them because I are they are they at war with me? They approve. Oh boy, we are at war. Um, was that because of the elves? Because if so, I may have just gotten I may have just gotten him killed. Um, yeah, I didn't realize that when I declared war on the dwarves. I've got my guy overextended here. Yikes! Yikes! So yeah, if I disband, uh, we're in trouble. So I think our best bet is to just beeline it out of the woods and uh, head over here and do some replenishment and get ready with a second army to come back after the Wood Elves and to burn down the Oak of Ages. You can see that the Dark Elves are attempting to do it, so that may be a great distraction for us to get in here and do what we need to do. So we'll get um, we'll get Vardek out of the firing line for just a moment, and then we'll, we'll get him right back in there as soon as we are able. Let's uh, get Sigvald, bring him around, and we're going to be able to destroy uh, Oakenhammer here. Let's Continue the siege, bring over our reinforcements, um, and let's just see here. Yeah, Oakenhammer, I mean they have a garrison, but it's it's not significant. I really want Archaeon to have the first like on-screen battle versus the dwarves. I feel like that's his honor. So we'll keep 
wrecking these guys over here. Who are these really? That's not enough movement points? 25%. I guess one of my mods isn't working properly. I haven't turned on the chaos tweaks, but it must not be working properly. <laughs> Because it won't let me go into that um, encamp stance there without 25% movement range. That's kind of annoying. I had a mod that was fixing it, but none of my mods update, or some of my mods for the Chaos Tweaks didn't even update. So some of the ones obviously did, because I still have the Sons of the Lost Plague and the Reavers of the Night Faith. Like, it's still working, but clearly some of the stuff isn't working um, quite right with the new patch, but we'll live. We made it this far in. I'm not terribly concerned about it. Let's finish Cascading Fire Cloak. And then um, let's go over here to Kolek, who is ready to go siege Mount Gunbad. And let's continue that, and then move up Felman. Felman and Coco Pox come in to reinforce. And raise another stunty settlement. Ooh, a potion of healing. Ooh, a nice armor of fortune there, too. Let's take a look at Felman and see what he's decked out with. He's got the Potion of Toughness, which gives him extra armor and melee defense, and it replenishes hit points for 21 seconds. Let's uh, take a look at the Potion of Healing here. It's 33 seconds of regeneration, so it's a little bit more healing. Let's give him that. He's got this Helm of Discord. I mean, Helm of Discord is nice, but I feel like um, a ward save and physical resistance would be even better. I mean, don't get me wrong, Helm of Discord's quite good. 25 seconds of debuffed enemies. That is always tricky. Eesh. Because that's a pretty serious debuff. Um, Shrieking Blade. We could swap it out and get him a better weapon here. Brass Cleaver. Ooh, man, plus 9 melee attack to all in range. That's actually pretty good. Let's go ahead and swap him over to this Armor of Fortune and give him a little bit more... Um, toughness there and let's jump in here to the skills for Coco Pox who has leveled up we need to finish up all of his magic he's done everything over here on the far right um, just aspect of Dread Knight uh, and that one can be handy because you can force giant terror routes if you use it properly so certainly won't mind having that send Nappa over here to wreck the garrison and we will get busy on the next turn all right, Basornling is finally healed. He was wounded almost near continually there for a while. Let's uh, take the camera to him. Can I even find him down in this mix? Good gravy. I mean, I see him like piled way down underneath there. Let's put him back into Sigvald's army so that he can begin to heal up. Um, I think it would probably be okay for me to split up a little here maybe. I need to take one one army over to wreck um, the Dwarf Brewery at Karamak, Karak Dromar. That would be a... I don't know, though, boy. This army is really not going to be great at fighting Dawi. <laughs> it's going to be really bad at fighting Dawi, actually. All in and of itself. Um, but we do need to swing both these armies around. Uh, so, But we need to hit Grom Peak, and then we'll swing back down and around to Karak Dromar and come through the Black Fire Pass into the Blood River... Uh, or Broad River Valley and the Western Badlands, and that Kolek and them can continue on the road to the uh, the Rib Peaks. There must be Skaven down here, with these settlements not being settled. I can't imagine that the dwarves aren't settling them. So there might be Skaven down there, and if I remember right, they were allied with the dwarves, which means that we may have to clear out some rats along the way. But that's I don't mind clearing out rats. I'm okay with this. I'm okay clearing out the rats. Let's uh, head around this direction. Because we can continue to replenish while we do. There we go. And uh, with Mount Gunbad down, we can push on through the mountains towards the Rib Peaks and see what awaits us. Uh, probably no reason not to force march here. Get us there just a hair faster. Headed towards Mount Squighorn. I understand Appius has a skill point. And then over here, we need to get Felman Ingerson into an encampment. I don't believe we can recruit another lord um, with him because, I, yeah, we don't have enough growth points. We need 22. He's only got 14, and he's gaining 10 per turn. 
and because my mod's not working, we're not getting the extra growth points from the encampment. So there's no way that Felman's going to end up with a better, uh, with another lord to help him out right now, unfortunately. Thinking I'm going to move over here, a little further away, where the Wood Elves probably won't want to come out of here. And they're still dealing with, um, with Lokir Felhart. So I think what we'll do is move away just a bit. And now that we're far enough away, I'm going to start swapping these Chosen out um, just a little bit at a time. So um, let's start with these Chosen with Great Weapons. Let's disband that. And then start recruiting in the Chosen with Halberds. Actually, we can probably get all these guys in one go. I know the shields are typically good against the elves because they can bring a whole lot of archers, but with that many trees and dragons around, we're going to need halberds. It's going to be like dealing with that terrorgeist army. And we can deal with the archers with the soul of damnation, um, so we should be okay. And I've got lots more anti-large here with the dragon ogre Shagoth and Vardek is on his dragon. We've got uh, several manticores and other stuff for a goon squad, so we should be okay. Uh, let's end another turn here. Alright folks, I went out and grabbed another mod that said it was supposed to do basically the same thing and it still won't fix it, so we're just kind of stuck with not being able to encamp the same way and then the growth isn't going to be the same. I liked that mod, but it looks like the user deleted it off the forums. There was another one that was very similar to it, and that's the one I've installed, and it said it was save game compatible, but something else is keeping it from functioning properly right now, and it could be because some of my mods never updated. But uh, we'll be alright. If that's the worst thing that happens, then that's not going to really even be that big of a deal. So we're going to push on through the mountains back down here, and I do believe that we're going to run into Skaven at Mount Squighorn, because I, I think Queek and Clan Moors starts in this vicinity, so we could have a whole lot of Skaven that we're going to have to root out of here. And the fact that Skaven are allied to the dwarves is insulting on so many levels that CA should be ashamed of themselves. I have my towers here. Let's start introducing to the dwarves why they are not worthy to stand before the Ever Chosen. Hargrim Renolfsson, the Dwarf Master Engineer, probably never imagined that he would be the first of all the Dawi to defend his keep against the invasion of Archaeon, and little could be done to prepare for such a time other than perhaps just going ahead and taking care of killing himself for Archaeon. <laughs> Speaking of the Ever Chosen, here he is, headed straight towards the gates, ready to let himself in to Vulture Mountain, which was clearly a greenskin settlement at one point. The dwarves might want to do... I mean, they, they built this big statue, but didn't even, like, redecorate the gates. I mean, come on, Dawi, I expect better from you. There's a bunch of thunderers up here. Appius and Sextons are going to start laying waste to them. My siege towers are on the way, and they're going to unload some massively armor-piercing infantry that the dwarves are going to suffer mightily against since their attack is relatively low and despite the fact that they have some decent units up here they're going to struggle to do much about it. I've got my Sons of the Last Plague moving up. You can see the uh, dwarf thunderers here taking shots at me, doing everything they can but you can see now that the siege engines have arrived and their payload is a most unpleasant one if you're a Dawi. These units are ill-equipped to fight off this type of troops here, and it is likely to be a massacre. My two Chaos Romans swooping about on their manticores, instilling chaos in this fight, which is quite nice. See here, my warriors with great weapons easily hacking their way through, and here comes the Reavers of the Night Fate. This is such an awesome-looking unit. I've absolutely loved this one. There were some uh, Iron Breakers who were pestering me with their blasting charges, so... Appius decided to give them a little magic. So they're probably regretting life a little bit right now. They're still going to continue to throw their measly blasting charges, but little good it will do them. And meanwhile, Archaon and his servants are chopping their way through the gate with the Sword of Cain and their halberds. So these crappy green skin gates won't be able to stand for too much longer and if we quickly blow through you can see what's on the other side will not be sufficient to stand against the sword of Cain in the hands of the ever chosen I'm starting to bring my troops down from the walls and we're gonna start ripping through these iron beard or uh, uh, sorry long beards and you can see here accidental landing of Appius down here he's supposed to be up on the wall but he kind of missed the landing 
<laughs> so Sextus instead is up there gaining the glory, and I'm trying to get Appius out of the way. I've got some Chosen who have come down from the walls after having climbed the ladders, and I'm going to send them over to go ahead and start attacking the infantry that are hiding just behind the gate. I'm going to use a Helm of Discord there with Appius to kind of keep these troops at bay momentarily. And the gates are about to fall. And the fight on the walls is not going well for the dwarves. You see that they are being destroyed. And the Master Engineer can only sit and watch as his dwarf keep is but the first of many that will suffer a similar fate. Will they even be able to put up a fight against this? Can you fight against this? Looks so awesome with that Sword of Cain ambiance going around him too. <laughs> the Ever Chosen is truly magnificent at this point. But if you watch him in battle too, like he can't hardly even take any damage because of his stats. I mean, the stats are just absolutely off the chart for Archaeon. Here comes the Reavers. They get into the back of this infantry and speed their passing. This is actually pretty merciful for Archaeon to put these Dawi down so decisively when indeed he could make them suffer much worse. So dying in battle should be kind of a gift to them. I think some of my uh, Reavers are actually stuck in the battle over here. And then we've got some more of my uh, Chosen down here. I think they're fighting up against Longbeards. No, Iron Breakers. So pretty tough infantry down here for the Dwarves. They've, those have actually had their weapon strength buffed quite a bit. But look at this. My Chosen have 96 melee defense and 75 weapon strength. 131 armor with the silver shield. 109 leadership. So good luck. Dwarves, good luck. The dwarves on the wall, not really loving life right now. Not exactly a good place to be, but where is a good place to be in the dwarven realms at this point? They've allied themselves with Skaven, which is utterly pathetic. And for that alone, they deserve to be wiped off the map with Chaos. I haven't used the Sword of Cain's ability here, because I'm likely to kill more of my own troops than I, than I will Dawei. They were never blobbed up sufficiently for me to really use it here. And at this point, the Dawei can't take much more of this beating. Their hold is about to fall into my hands. You can see their troops now chain routing. And the engineer finds himself fleeing, and he won't be the first dwarf. <laughs> Despite how ironclad their will usually is, he won't be the first or the last, or sorry, he will, he will be the first, but he won't be the last dwarf to flee before Archaeon's might and walk through the ground all at the same time, which is pretty impressive. So he's also a transdimensional engineer. It's quite amazing. I think there's just a few slayers left, and that's that. All right, so Vulture Mountain is absolutely destroyed which is appropriate. There's going to be a lot of destroyed dwarfs between here and the end of this campaign. Oh, I wish there was a way to turn off that notification. Um, let's see here. Nappa has leveled up. Might as well just keep giving him all of his campaign map stuff since that's where we're using him. Failed to assault the garrison on this turn. We don't have the movement points to reach it. And we've got Kolek and Felman headed south. And then we have re-recruited the units that we needed with um, with Vardek. <clears throat> and we could venture back into the woods at this point. So we will. Uh, but we've got to have 25% of our movement range to go in an encampment these days. So let's move up, go into an encampment, make sure we're plenty healed. And uh, let's see if we can take out Dirt through a King's Glade. <clears throat> Should be able to. So we'll make a move on Durthu at King's Glade and see if we can eventually work our way uh, over to the Oak of Ages. It's going to be an interesting challenge, to say the least, uh, to take out that many Wood Elves, potentially, but it'll be fun. And now Archaeon is going to have to head north um, to get to Xandri and Gorgazan. Uh, so I think we are ready to end a turn, other than Terhilius here. Uh, we can finish off his work on Penumbral Pendulum. And there we go. Well, the Wood Elves moved even more forces into position, so we'd be up against ten forest dragons. And that's going to be four 
five tree men, including the two lords between these armies, four wildwood rangers. I'm less concerned about them, but still it's a problem because that's something they'd be hacking away at our halberds. Fortunately, not a whole lot of archers. Um, the Hell Cannon could certainly do some work on that infantry, but that is a substantial force to take on, so we'll kind of wait and find the right opportunity to get in to the woods, because we've got a heck of a, a force to take on there, especially alone right now. Grom Peak, we're just going to put it down with Sigvald, raise it to the ground, and that should be the end of them. I'm going to start moving around with uh, with Patchy the Eversalt. We'll start traveling back towards Karak Dromar, and Sigvald will just have to catch up. And speaking of Sigvald, he is gaining a lot of skill points. We finished off his Blade Shield over here. I think Aura of Chaos isn't going to hurt, especially going up against Dawi. And uh, this leadership aura, aura of Chaos. Let's go ahead and start um, getting all that stuff taken care of. We are coming down through the pass from Gunbad into the Rib Peaks. So we're quite close to our destination there. There's the Appius Roll of Skill Point. <laughs> Look at that. Archon's like, hey, thanks, buddy. Appreciate it. Ooh, we've got a nice Chaos Rebellion going on up there, too. I like it. Hang on, hang on. We got the wrong one selected. Let's get our K on and uh, move him out into the desert and start heading north to our next dwarf target, which is actually going to be Bel Aliad. So we'll head north, hit Bel Aliad, and then push north yet again to Zandri. Check out the vampire coast all over the place here, too. So lots of stuff going on. Appius, get over it, buddy. I don't have a place to spend your skill point. And let's send Nappa to do some scouting in this direction. There we go. Oh boy, the Wood Elves came out of the woods looking for us. And they have some significant reinforcements with a lot of archers. This is a fight that we cannot possibly win. We need to retreat and hope that we can get into a better position. Let's go take a look at that um, that fight that was coming out towards us in the woods. I guess all their troops went on a force march back in the other direction. Oh, it's going to be hard to find our way into the woods. It's going to be quite difficult to find our way into the woods. We'll have to wait for a better opportunity. It's just not there at the moment. If they have that many reinforcements, we won't be able to hold them off. Um, we could try and do this. In order to make ourselves an inroad, I could ask the uh, the Dark Elves to converge up here and see if that pulls away some of Durthu's forces. So we'll see whether or not that may buy us an inroad to where we need to be. Skip that particular notification, and our Kaon is going to actually start taking some attrition, maybe that far out in the desert, but we'll move over here. Holy moly! Do you take me for a Wazek? I will not disgrace my ancestors. <laughs> I don't know if I take you for a Wazek, but holy cow, we found the dwarves, folks. Did we ever find the dwarves? They have a bunch of grud throwers, bugmans, rangers, iron breakers. We found them. And they are at Bel Aliad, so we're going to have an awesome battle on our hands very quickly there. Let's take Sigvald out of the mountains. Force march him this direction. The vampires are trying to resettle over here, which has just been downright irritating. I think Prague is under siege. I'll continue to have Norska put pressure on uh, von Karstein, but I'm just not concerned with them right now. They are a nuisance, and that's about the worst of it. A nuisance, and that's about it. All right, Colex Sun Eater, uh, yes, Clan Moors is down here. So the allies of the dwarves are nearby, and boy, do they have their warp lightning cannons. So it's going to be important that we keep Colex and um, Patchy, or sorry, Felman, close together. But uh, remember the scave? Holy crap! Now how come, boy, that that movement? I'm going to have to force march to get close enough, but I don't like the fact that they're going to be really tired coming into combat, but in case there's more Skaven, now we could get hit by an ambush here too, you know how the Skaven are. That happens a lot. Ha! It wasn't an ambush, but the Skaven tried to move past us, and now they've been caught in an underway interception by Kolek. So I'm going to use Kolek, stomp the crap out of Thramute here, and his crap army.
Tharmute was certainly not the brightest of his litter. And um, he's proven that here, trying to use the underway and then being intercepted by an angry dragon ogre who was slumbering peacefully until awoken. And uh, not just one dragon ogre, but very many. I don't think we have all seven yet, but the deadly sins heading right towards his army. And despite the fact that he has some well-armored storm vermin, some with halberds, and four warp lightning cannons, plague monks, sensor bearers, warp fire throwers, he's got all manner of slingers up front to slow me down. So lots of different units here that the Skaven has here, gutter runner slingers. And those warp lightning cannons, despite being a pretty powerful unit, will just not be able to put any real damage on Kolek at this point. And Kolek also replenishes thanks to having defeated Isabella von Karstein. So good luck. You're fighting a replenished, or a uh, Shagoth that replenishes and has ridiculous stats. And I want you all to see what happens when your Skaven army is caught underground by an army of dragon ogres. And then you sit back and camp. Good luck with that. Good luck with then here comes Skull X the Great too. A sight that would certainly be striking fear into the heart of the Skaven. Kolek raising Star Crusher, rallying his forces for what will be a quick and decisive battle. <laughs> Kolek's running animations are a little bit funny sometimes. The cannons are actually going to block the charge of some of my army initially. There are a whole lot of storm vermin. There's going to be some warp lightning initially coming down in here, but I'm going to pull Kolek through and go straight to Tharmute. And Tharmute is instantly going to regret having been alive. And you can already see that much of the Skaven army is terrified and fleeing, and who can really blame them? Look at what they're fighting up against. Skullex over here ripping them apart, the rest of them fleeing back, trying to survive if even but a few more minutes of their pathetic Skaven lives, and there is no fleeing when they're caught in an underground battle like this. You can see my chariots pushing through. That's going to be the last time that Tharmute ever gets in the way of Kolek, Sun Eater. He'll be no more able to make that mistake in the underway, and perhaps the rest of Clan Wars might actually learn a lesson here, but... Something tells me that I rather doubt it. The Skaven haven't learned from the lessons of the first, uh, what was it, was it Clan Rictus that was up there? I can't remember which one we were fighting initially, but they just haven't, haven't learned. Well, I guess Thramut uh, learned an important lesson there, which is um, Warp Lightning Cannons are kind of just like an itchy nuisance for Kolek at this point. It really did nothing to him. And that's a lot of terror to be facing when you're Skaven, so GG. See you later. It actually wasn't a good game, but, you know, whatever. What the bullcrap? Sextus gets wounded by a Skaven agent? I find that hard to believe. It's a very high-level Skaven agent, too, so that's going to be extremely irritating and hard to deal with. Um, I don't have Sextus, and if I attack the dwarves here, they're going to get all of their um, reinforcements, but I think I'm going to go over here and uh, punish the dwarves heavily. Eliad, I want to attack this guy right here, I believe. So... Archaon is going to get a first open field battle here with the Dawi. Let's get it done. All right, on the battlefield outside of Bel Eliad, um, we've got Archaon's army here, Archaon on the flank. And, of course, Sextus was injured, so I only have Appius with me. All of my infantry is aligned to where all the dwarf reinforcements are coming onto the battlefield. The main dwarf army deployed across from me but won't be able to face me, and then I've hidden my cavalry behind a large sand dune to await an opportunity to get to the artillery that is fielded by the main dwarf force. So let me just show you that real quick. They've got four bolt throwers uh, over here, so a lot of artillery to potentially have to face, and quite a bit of infantry, rangers with great weapons. There's some hammers and other rangers mixed in here as well. So quite a few troops over here for the dwarves, and let's watch what happens as the reinforcing troops enter the battlefield 
and they'll be immediately met by the Reavers of the Night Faith, the Sons of the Last Plague, Archaeon, and all of the different Chosen in Archaeon's army with their absurd stats. So the Dawi will be met in a giant infantry clash, and Archaeon is going to immediately come up and look for an opportunity to use the ability on the Sword of Cain and see if we can kill a whole lot of dwarves. And there it comes. It actually starts moving away from the main line, which is probably good for me. Else it would have killed a whole bunch of my own troops. The Sword of Cain already unleashing its power for its master. And having killed and maimed many, many dwarves and actually sent them berserk there. You can see that this fight is very quickly turning into my favor. The dwarf infantry just cannot stand up in this fight. They are completely overmatched. Despite the fact that they have hammers, slayers, long beards, here comes the piercing bolts of burning, Archaeon calling down the flaming heavens onto the dwarves. The piercing bolts of burning, I believe, have good armor piercing, which is why I'm going to use it here. And it's my objective to mop up this infantry force as quickly as possible. And you can see that certainly starting to happen here as they're taking massive damage. Appius is going to come in and help his master out by laying down a pit of shades and sucking up a huge load of dwarves into it, and sending them into the void, and then joining combat himself. And while this battle is finishing up, the dwarves are just coming over the top of the dunes over here with all of their rangers with great weapons in a desperate bid to arrive before the battle's already over. So they say that dwarves are dangerous over short distances, but they're going to wish they were faster at this point because their brethren are being cut down and absolutely slaughtered by the superior forces of Archaeon. You see the uh, Iron Breakers here trying to do some damage, but it's not exactly working. Archaeon is back here, tearing through them unit by unit. More bolts of burning coming down from the skies. I didn't start with a good winds of magic, so I'm not able to summon up near as many spells as I would like at the moment, but we're still getting a lot of damage done. You can see some of the dwarves beginning to flee, and as they do, we've got grudge throwers and other reinforcements coming on, but they're pinned up right against the wall, and they're not going to be in a good position to support anywhere, as I'm going to immediately dump Appius and lots of infantry down onto these grudge throwers and assure that they can't do anything significant to help in this battle. Now the dwarf reinforcements, some have arrived and I'm pushing Archaon back through his troops. And I'm going to send him out to meet them. And you can see some piercing bolts of burning already meeting those dwarves. And then the wielder of the Sword of Cain is going to come crashing right into all these rangers with great weapons. I want to make sure that these guys do not get to start throwing axes at me. In the meantime, the dwarves did get out of position. And I'll swing over here and let you all catch some of this glorious Knights of Chaos cavalry action. You see a grudge thrower and the bolt throwers here attempting to slow down what is a giant horde of cavalry. And that cavalry is going to quickly swarm and destroy all these bolt throwers and grudge throwers. So that's going to be the end of the dwarf artillery. Meanwhile, having finally arrived on position, some of the dwarf reinforcements move to the wrong area and are going to have to reposition. I don't know if they could only see a little bit of my cavalry, but for whatever reason, the AI took up position there. I've now got infantry freed up from the other fight, including the Reavers of the Night Faith who are in here and others, cutting their way through Archaon, cutting his way alone here, doesn't even need the reinforcements. You can see the dwarfs pouring in and attempting to make some difference in this battle. These units over here have gotten kind of bugged out. I have no idea what's going on with them. You can see it's absolutely no problem for Archaon to take on all these dwarves alone. Some of the rangers with great weapons are throwing their axes, but I'll be pushing more and more infantry in this direction to try and cease all of the throwing axes and blasting charges, but all of their efforts here are really not making any difference against an Archaon that they really can't hardly damage. And then look who has arrived after having destroyed the artillery. Look at the glorious scene, the Knights of Chaos crashing into the back lines of these Dawi and absolutely destroying them at the same time that Appius drops down. And that is going to absolutely crush the Dawi armies. And even though they had huge numbers and some decent troops among them, it was not enough. And finally, the remaining dwarf reinforcements headed this way. 
but it's all for naught. Their troops are beginning to break because of the lack of leadership, having seen their kin utterly destroyed. The only unit that will go on to fight will be this giant slayer because they have taken oaths, and Archaon is glad that they took the oaths because he needs more skulls for the skull throne. Blood for the blood god. Here it is. Knights of Chaos charging in, and despite these units being particularly made for anti-armor and anti-large, there is no way that they can take on these upgraded Chaos Knights, and the Giant Slayers will themselves be slain. You can see their heads already laying all over the ground as they are being severed at a rather rapid pace. They took an oath, and Archaon helped them lived up to their oath. They have now been slain in battle as their oath called for, and that is going to be the end of the Dawi in this region. Folks, there's a reason he's the Ever Chosen. And not only is the Ever Chosen, he's the Ever Chosen with the sword of a god. So, yeah, a little going to be a little problem here for the dwarves. Despite their multiple stacks there, they were handily beaten down, and that cavalry was just absolutely brutal at the end. Absolutely brutal. So, left the dwarves in a state of utter ruin here. Uh, I do need to save scum a little bit here. Not actually go load it, but I'm going to do a quick save because uh, with my mods broken, if the Reavers of the Night Faith or the Sons of the Last Plague get ruined, I don't think they can come back. So, that's just a safety factor for me. Uh, we're going to uh, just raise this to the ground. So, the dwarves destroyed, and uh, little good it did for that Skaven to take out my, uh, <laughs> to take out uh, Sextus at that point. Yeah, a lot of good it did him. So, we have a beard collector trait now. We get extra leadership when fighting the dwarves. I don't think that our leadership was suffering regardless, but hey, we'll take every take every benefit that we get. <laughs> Looks like the uh, Greenskins maybe headed over here to try and do our work for us at the brewery. I'm not sure that I approve of that. That is my work to be done. And I don't remember allowing them to do this. I moved past Mount Squighorn, which I probably did not really intend to do. Going to uh, move back away over here. And we'll be in position to attack uh, Mount Squighorn. And I think we're in good shape there. The Silver Road is in big trouble. Big trouble. So, um, I know that this is a relatively short episode, and I was thinking that I was going to end this all in one episode. Clearly I'm not. I don't want to do this a disservice and try and end it quickly. There's a lot of dwarves to wreck here, so we're going to continue wrecking them. And I want you all to see most of it. If it gets too repetitive... We won't make you deal with it, but we've had some good battles so far, and I expect that there's going to be more. Look at this. Thorgrim is actually garrisoned up here. So I don't think that this crap greenskin army under Grimgor would actually have much of a chance to take him down, but uh, we'll potentially get our opportunity. Look at that Castle Drakenhof settled by greenskins. All these people, like, just swooping in and taking the lands that I leave open for them when they don't deserve it. Not sure that I'm okay with all of this. Uh, speaking of, let's put a... Uh, let's, before I forget about it, I'm going to come down here and get Norska. No and then give them another target against uh, Von Karstein. So that they'll continue the push. Set the war coordination target. Does that mean it's actually set? Yeah, war coordination target. Okay. Got it. Um, so we're set. That's going to be it for this episode. I will be back with more soon, so I hope you guys are ready to see it. Who knows, maybe my mods will be working properly by then. There's only a few of them that aren't, so it's really not a big deal in the end. And the old world continues to burn under the feet of Archaon the Ever Chosen. <laughs>